All right, if there's 10 ways to do something in Photoshop, there's probably a thousand ways to do it. And that's the beauty of Photoshop. And of course, it's a very uh, in-depth program. And I'm still learning it. And I've been doing, probably working in Photoshop for 15 years. I think the most important thing that we all have to understand as we move forward, in whether it's the capture side or the post side, is that we are all different in the way we like the final to, to look like. We, we're all different in the way we view the world. And so um, Photoshop has gives you hundreds, if not thousands of options. And sometimes that can be a little bit intimidating. And I think that um, uh, even when I first started out with Photoshop, I was just like overwhelmed by the program. Here's what I would encourage is that if you work within the arena or go down the path of what you love and just refine that over and over again, eventually you will be able to get to the end result without you know, too much complication. There's so many techniques out there and I think I see a lot of photographers that are trying to learn every technique on the planet and they really don't end up kind of working within the arena of what they really like. So don't be intimidated by the program. And so I've come up with some techniques that fit me to the T. And the fact is I'm colorblind. And so one of the things that you'll notice about a lot of my work is they're very, it's very desaturated. And the reason why I desaturate my images is because I'm afraid that the color is gonna be off. And so by desaturating it, I don't have to worry about it. And so therefore, um, that fits the look that I like and I'm comfortable with that that uh, sort of desaturated look. That may not fit your vision. So, but the fact is you have certain things that you are drawn to or maybe shy away from or driven by that can create a look that fits you perfectly. So I'm gonna go through a little bit of uh, Photoshop and show you what I do. And, uh, but don't, don't think that that's the way you have to work. Work within what's comfortable within your uniqueness. All right, here we are in front of the computer uh, talking about Photoshop. And really, I look at it as Photoshop is the second half of the whole process, the creative process. So just like with the capture side, there's things that you like in the way you approach uh, taking the picture that's unique to you, and uh, the post side is the same way. It's a creative process all the way through. And in some ways, um, because of the tools that we have with Photoshop, Photoshop actually is playing a larger role in the process, it seems like, um, as time goes on. So really you have to kind of get your skills up to speed with Photoshop. The one thing that I've noticed recently is that if you take and really dedicate uh, the time to learn Photoshop, you can be up to speed pretty quick. And I would say that I know people that are only, are only doing Photoshop for a couple years and they're doing things that I don't, I can't even do. They've exceeded my skill. I've been doing Photoshop for probably 15 years, but it's been a real gradual increase in, in skill level for me uh, over, over time. So uh, I've got some things that I've learned that I've kind of been able to dive in and sort of make unique to me. And I love doing it. I love solving a problem. I love kind of uh, figuring out where I want to end up, where I want to go, and then, and then work, work to get there. So what we want to do is really talk about the, the, the single most important thing for me in Photoshop uh, to sort of build a foundation is that um, you have to open and learn to open your images in RAW, the RAW con conversion. And the reason for that is, is that um, the RAW conversion is, uh, has the ability to apply certain things to the file that are non-destructive. So the first thing you want to think about is if there's anything you want to do in terms of lighting, lighting or darkening the image overall, building contrast, taking contrast away, color balance, um, there's even dodge and burn in RAW. And if you can do that in RAW, then you are better off in uh, later because if you do it in Photoshop, there's going to be some issues with destructive, destructive things going on. And here's how I look at this. If you had um, a five gallon bucket of marbles uh, and that represented your uh, bit depth, okay? And cameras 
uh, today, for the most part, capture in 14-bit. Um, when I do HDR and I run three images or five images and build uh, into one, I can actually produce a true 16-bit image. So if I take that 16-bit image and I um, open it up in Photoshop, I have a true 16-bit, say, representation of marbles. Um, and every time I go and do something in Photoshop, it's like taking a scoop of marbles and throwing it out. So if you, if you start in RAW, you, you basically are not throwing away any marbles until you get to Photoshop. So start in RAW, do what you can in RAW, and then move on into um, uh, Photoshop. Now, the other thing that I learned a few years ago is to take my image and I can open it as a smart object, which allows me to still be tied to RAW. So let's say I open it up, I look at it, and then I want to uh, apply, like what I do is I take a black and white version of that and, and blend the two together, and I go, hmm, that's not exactly what I want. Instead of saying I'm stuck with it, I can still go back to RAW, make my adjustments in RAW, open it up again, and allow myself to uh, move from there, move forward from there with uh, the image the way I want it. And then I can begin to obviously start adding things that are destructive. The other thing to know about uh, Photoshop is that if you work in adjustment layers, so we're going to show you here at the very bottom of your layers palette, you have a little icon is the third, fourth icon over, and basically it says create a new or fill uh, a new fill or adjustment layer. And if you click on that, you have a whole uh, dozen or so options of things that you can do that actually create an adjustment layer, and that adjustment layer is um, basically non-destructive. Uh, it, it, it's only destructive once, so you can keep on going back and forth to it a hundred times and it's not gonna add any more destruction to the final image. So it's important to do that um, when you're building an image. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you how I go into RAW first. So let's go over here and I've got uh, James Townsend here. I shot from another project and here's my, my uh, uh, sort of options that I have of the outtakes. These are the pure RAW images. And I've marked uh, one here that has a five star, and that's how I indicate typically what images I want to keep and take a look at later. But let's open that, and the, the easiest way to do that is I can double click on the image, but the little shortcut that gets you straight to RAW is Command R, and that's gonna get me into RAW here. So here's James in RAW, and I wanna show you how this smart object thing works. For example, the first thing I do is I take my fill light a little bit and move it into the direction that sort of lightens the whole overhaul image up a little bit. And then I'll build my contrast down, I'll take my contrast down, and then I can go up here into um, a, uh, a burn or dodge brush, and I can maybe darken his face down a little bit if I over lit him too much. In this case, I don't think I really did, but I just wanna show you that. And then you have a little pin here that tells you this is what you did. And that, which is really cool, is you're not stuck with that uh, exposure adjustment. You can go darker or you can go lighter. So at any rate, we're just gonna go down just a little bit on him here. So um, to open up a object in Smart, you can either go into your, uh, this little line down here that tells you, um, it's the workflow options. You can say, um, click open Photoshop, Open in Photoshop as a smart object, and it'll do it for you every time. If you don't do that, so let's unclick that. The way I, and I did it for a long time is you actually hold the shift key down, and you just say open, uh, and it'll open as a smart object. So let's take a look here. So here's uh, James straight from RAW. And you can see this little indication up here tells us that we're uh, still linked to RAW. A new smart object via copy, and then I can blend it there's, there's a lot of options here I can do. Reopen it back in RAW, click on black and white, and I can do all sorts of fun things in here to the image to get the tones that I want. And so when I say okay, now I have uh, these two images still tied to RAW, 
but have blended together. So that's kind of the beginning of where I start. So it's important to understand raw, it's important to understand adjustment layers, um, and really I think once you get that, you're, you're pretty good to go. So let's go back to, I'm gonna go back to the image that we have already done of Jim Jim, because or James, he goes by Jim Jim, is his nickname. And you can see here the whole set of layers. We're gonna unclick these one at a time down here of how I've built this image. Now it would take a long time to kind of show you the whole steps by step here to do this, but basically there's my 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 uh, background straight from Photomatics, and I've brought it into RAW, pretty much opened it up. It's not real uh, impressive of a background. Uh, you can see the HDR has captured a little bit of the detail in the in the, the, in the uh, pure sunlight here, but that doesn't matter to me because I'm blowing it out. So now what I do is I add a black and white adjustment layer, a hue saturation, a photo filter to warm it up. Here's my glow. Um, that's a kind of a glow, real, real center spot glow. Then I spread it out a little bit more. And here's some streaky kind of effects going on here. Uh, overall levels, drop it down a little bit. And then here's uh, James in the, in the picture. And this is again, knocked out in Photoshop CS5. Uh, and then I've added uh, to him uh, a few adjustment layers to grid him up a little bit. Add some grain. I, I'd like to add grain because uh, it just gives a little bit since that it still kind of has that film look. And then on occasion, uh, not every picture, and I've just been only been doing this about six months, is I've been experimenting with the Nick software and just adding a little bit of tonal contrast to the, to the overall image. And it's usually a very slight uh, on the lowest setting. And so there you have Jim Jim, um, whoops, uh, as the final image. And the beauty of this is I can hand this file to the client and the client can say, you know what? And they did, in fact, we don't like that much glow. And so I went in there for them and I took my percentages down on the glows for them. And they may say, you know what? It's a little too warm for us, cool it down. So I go back to my photo filter and I can take the, the warmth out. So that's the beauty of working in layers. And I save this PSD file in layers for the client. It's a, it kind of ends up to be a big file, but it's there for them in the future and for me too in the future to uh, change, change up maybe uh, something that I thought later I should have done. So there you have it pretty much in a nutshell. I know that's a quick re review of Photoshop, but uh, keep in mind, don't be intimidated by the fact that it's a huge program. It seems like it's, you know, it's a little bit uh, more than, than uh, you know, what we can sort of figure out, but it's not, not as you work over time, you learn little steps, baby steps, and eventually you get to where you can pretty much do everything you need to do in Photoshop. So um, have at it, don't be intimidated. And if you send me an email saying, here's my first composite, I guarantee I'll respond by saying, now do 300. Special thanks to F.J. Westcott for keeping this episode lit up. Like the music? Special thanks to Triple Scoop Music. Frame Network giveaways are brought to you by B&H. Head to giveaways.framenetwork.com for your chance to win. Find out more about the equipment used in this episode on framenetwork.com.